Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 50 years of sharing God's unconditional love and grace. And now, Andrew continues teaching from the life-changing Word of God. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing a series talking about how to find, follow, and fulfill God's will. I spent two weeks on TV talking about how to find God's will. Now, all of this week, I've been talking about how to follow God's will. It's, it's one thing to know what God wants you to do, but then to get to a place to where you can be usable and allow God to use you is a totally separate thing. And sometimes people will seek the Lord when they have no clue about what to do, but the moment they get some inclination of what God wants them to do, they just take a word from God, make a paragraph out of it, and they go and do their own thing, and they mess the whole thing up. And I've been using Moses as an example of this. And uh, I've combined the account of Moses in Exodus chapter 2, 3, and 4 with the scriptures in Acts chapter 7 and also Hebrews chapter 11 that also talk about Moses. And when you put them all together, you find out that Moses knew what God's will for his life was, but he just supposed that God was going to use his position, his authority, his power that he had in the Egyptian government to bring deliverance to the Jews. And it wound up not being God's plan. So Moses knew God's will, but he didn't know God's plan for his life. He also missed the timing. And I combined Hebrews, or excuse me, it was uh, Genesis chapter 15 with Exodus chapter 12, verses 40 and 41, and showed you that Moses tried to bring deliverance to the Jews 10 years before the prophecy of Genesis 15 was complete. And so he not only missed God's plan, he missed God's timing. And our self-will and our own reliance upon ourself is probably one of our biggest uh, inroads of Satan into our life. We've got to get to where we are no longer in control of our life, but we are letting God take control. And I use the scriptures in Exodus chapter 4, and this is where we ended yesterday, that for uh, 40 years, Moses had been pursuing God and asking God to give him another chance to bring deliverance to the Jews. It says in Romans chapter 11, verse 29, that the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. And I also used Hebrews chapter 11, where it talked about that Moses endured as seeing him who is invisible. That word endured is defined by perseverance. It isn't talking about that he was running away from God and wanting to do away with it. He was holding on to the fact that God had called him to bring deliverance to the Jews. The gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. God never changes his plans for us regardless of how much we mess things up. He was holding on to that, but when God showed up in Exodus chapter 3 and started telling him, now go down and bring deliverance to the Jews, Moses had come to the end of himself and he felt totally unqualified. And did you know that that's a good place to be? The end of yourself is the beginning of God. And so he had reached a place to where God, I can't do it on my own. That's good, but it'll kill you if you stop there. You've got to come to that place to where God, I can't do it, but you've got to go beyond that and say, I can't do it, but you can do it through me. I can do it with your power. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not I can do all things, period, but I can do all things through Christ. And Moses was in transition. So God gave him this final exam of Bush University and said, cast your stick down. He did. It turned into a snake and he fled from it. But God said, pick it up by the tail. And I went through quite a bit on this yesterday. I'm just mentioning this quickly. But Moses picked it up by the tail. And when it did, it turned back into a stick. And you know what? This was an absolute surrender on Moses' part because he didn't know what the income, outcome of this would be when he picked up this snake by the tail. In the natural, it looked like this snake could turn and bite him and he could die. But he had reached a place to where, God, I'd rather die doing it your way, following you, than to do my own thing. And that was a necessary place that he had to come to. That's where all of us have to come to. But when he picked up this stick by the tail, it turned back into a rod. And to anybody else, it looked just like Moses' rod. I'm sure it looked the same. If he had his initials carved in it, I bet you it still had his initials carved in it. In the natural, it looked the same, but it was different now because look at this in Exodus chapter 4 
in verse 20, after Moses had this encounter with the Lord, it says, And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt, and Moses took the rod of God in his hand. This wasn't Moses' stick anymore. It was God's stick. It had turned into the rod of God. Prior to that time, that rod couldn't do anything except just jar Moses if he hit a rock or something. But now that it was the rod of God, he could strike a rock and enough water had come out to feed three million Jews and all of their animals. It was miraculous because it was the rod of God. And see, this is very symbolic of our life that we have to throw our life down and pick it up by the tail. GOD GIVES IT BACK TO US, AND OTHER PEOPLE WILL THINK, WELL, IT'S STILL YOUR LIFE. YOU'RE STILL MAKING DECISIONS. WELL, I AM, BUT I'M MAKING THEM IN SUBMISSION TO GOD. IT'S NOT ME ANYMORE DOING THINGS. IT'S GOD LIVING THROUGH ME. AS PAUL SAID, IT'S NOT ME LIVING, BUT IT'S CHRIST LIVING IN ME. IN THE LIFE THAT I NOW LIVE IN THE FLESH, I LIVE BY THE FAITH OF THE SON OF GOD WHO LOVED ME AND GAVE HIMSELF FOR ME, GALATIANS 2.20. AND SO, MAN, THESE ARE POWERFUL THINGS, BUT... HERE'S ANOTHER POINT. THIS IS WHAT I'M REALLY WANTING TO GET ACROSS TODAY. EVEN THOUGH MOSES HAD PERSEVERED FOR 40 YEARS, FINALLY HAD THIS ENCOUNTER WITH THE LORD, THREW HIS STICK DOWN, YIELDED HIS LIFE, EVEN TO THE POINT THAT IT COULD KILL HIM, PICKED IT UP, AND NOW THAT STICK HAD BECOME GOD'S STICK, AND HE WAS EMPOWERED BY GOD WITH SUPERNATURAL ABILITY, NOT JUST NATURAL ABILITY LIKE A GENERAL OR A PERSON WHO WAS IN A POSITION OF AUTHORITY IN EGYPT, BUT HE HAD GOD'S POWER AND GOD'S AUTHORITY. EVEN THOUGH ALL OF THESE THINGS THAT HAD TRANSPIRED, DID YOU KNOW IT'S NOT A ONE-TIME EXPERIENCE. MOSES HAD TO CONTINUE WALKING WITH GOD. AND YOU CAN SEE THIS BECAUSE HE WENT DOWN TO EGYPT AFTER THIS. HE DID THE TEN PLAGUES. HE BROUGHT THE CHILDREN OF ISRAEL OUT. AND IT WAS ABSOLUTELY MIRACULOUS, EVERYTHING THAT HAPPENED. BUT THEN IN THE 14TH CHAPTER OF THE BOOK OF EXODUS, AFTER THEY HAD COME OUT OF THE LAND OF EGYPT, LOOK AT SOME THINGS THAT HAPPENED HERE, AND THIS WILL ILLUSTRATE PERFECTLY THAT IT'S NOT JUST A ONE-TIME RELATIONSHIP OR EXPERIENCE THAT YOU HAVE WITH THE LORD, BUT YOU HAVE TO CONTINUE WALKING IN THESE THINGS THAT GOD HAS DONE. SO IN EXODUS CHAPTER 14, IT SAYS, AND THE LORD SPAKE UNTO MOSES, SAYING, SPEAK UNTO THE CHILDREN OF ISRAEL THAT THEY TURN AND ENCAMP BEFORE, AND I CAN'T PRONOUNCE THE NAME OF THIS PLACE, BETWEEN MIGDAL AND THE SEA, OVER AGAINST Baalzephon, BEFORE IT SHALL YE ENCAMP BY THE SEA. FOR PHARAOH WILL SAY OF THE CHILDREN OF ISRAEL, THEY ARE ENTANGLED IN THE LAND. THE WILDERNESS HAS SHUT THEM IN. AND I WILL HARDEN PHARAOH'S HEART THAT HE SHALL FOLLOW AFTER THEM. AND I WILL BE HONORED UPON PHARAOH AND UPON ALL OF THE HOST THAT THE EGYPTIANS MAY KNOW THAT I AM THE LORD. AND THEY DID SO. SO THE LORD TOLD MOSES, IN A SENSE, TO SET A TRAP FOR PHARAOH. GO CAMP IN THIS PLACE WHERE YOU HAD A MOUNTAIN ON TWO SIDES AND THE RED SEA ON THE OTHER SIDE. SO IT WAS LIKE A DEAD END. IT WAS A BOX CANYON. THERE WAS NO WAY OUT. AND HE SAID, PHARAOH WILL THINK YOU'RE ENTANGLED IN THE WILDERNESS. IN OTHER WORDS, FOR A MILITARY GUY, THIS WAS JUST GREAT. IT WOULD BE EASY FOR HIM TO COME OUT AND WIPE OUT ALL OF THE JEWS BECAUSE THEY HAD NO WAY TO RETREAT. AND HE SAYS, I'M GOING TO HARDEN PHARAOH'S HEART SO THAT HE WILL FOLLOW YOU. BUT HE SAYS, I WILL BE HONORED UPON PHARAOH AND UPON ALL OF HIS HOST. IN OTHER WORDS, GOD PROMISED MOSES RIGHT HERE THAT HE WOULD GAIN THE VICTORY OVER PHARAOH AND HIS HOST. SO THE LORD SET THIS UP, TOLD MOSES WHAT THE END RESULT OF IT WOULD BE. AND SO MOSES OBEYED. SURE ENOUGH, PHARAOH SAID, THIS IS MY OPPORTUNITY TO GET VENGEANCE ON THEM. AND HE TOOK ALL OF HIS um, CHARIOTS AND ALL OF HIS ARMIES, AND HE PURSUED THEM. AND WHEN THE ISRAELITES SAW THEM COMING, THEY BEGAN TO SCREAM AND SAID, IT WOULD HAVE BEEN BETTER FOR US TO HAVE DIED IN EGYPT. AND THEY GOT MAD. THEY WERE GOING TO PERFORM A MUTINY. THEY WERE GOING TO APPOINT A CAPTAIN TO GO AND SUBMIT UNTO PHARAOH SO THAT HE WOULDN'T KILL THEM. AND LOOK WHAT MOSES DID. IN VERSE 13, IT SAYS, MOSES SAID UNTO THE PEOPLE, FEAR YE NOT, STAND STILL AND SEE THE SALVATION OF THE LORD, WHICH HE WILL SHOW YOU TODAY FOR THE EGYPTIANS WHOM YE HAVE SEEN TODAY. YE SHALL SEE THEM AGAIN NO MORE FOREVER. SO MOSES TOOK WHAT GOD TOLD HIM AND BASICALLY CALMED THE JEWS AND SAID, LOOK, GOD IS GOING TO WIPE THESE PEOPLE OUT. THIS IS THE DAY THAT YOU ARE GOING TO FINALLY OVERCOME THE EGYPTIANS. YOU'LL NEVER SEE THEM ANYMORE. AND HE SAYS, THE LORD WILL FIGHT FOR YOU AND YOU SHALL HOLD YOUR PEACE. NOW, MOST PEOPLE TAKE THIS AS GOOD, AND IT WAS GOOD IN THE SENSE THAT HE PROPHESIED 
the end result that they were going to win. But he made a mistake here. He says, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. In other words, you don't have to do anything. Just stand still and watch this. That was wrong. I'll show you that in just a second. But in the next verse down here, verse 15, it says, The Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. So it doesn't say this, but if you read this, here's the Israelites seeing the Egyptians pursuing them. They come running to Moses. They're wanting to mutiny. They're wanting to do away with him, appoint a captain, submit to the uh, Egyptians. There was this mutiny going on. Moses stilled them all by saying, Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You'll never see him again. The Lord's going to fight for you and you'll hold your peace. And then the next verse, he's, the Lord says, Why are you crying unto me? So apparently, after Moses stopped this riot that was going on, the people were stopped because God had used Moses in these miraculous ways, and uh, he commanded a lot of authority and power. It stopped the people, but then apparently, after they stopped, Moses must have fallen on his face and started crying out to God, Oh, God, destroy the Egyptians. Oh, God, do something. Now, he knew God was going to do it, he, he prophesied that they were going to win, but apparently he was crying out to God, God, do something. Here come the Egyptians. Move, do something. Because God said, Why are you crying unto me? Apparently he was crying unto to the Lord. And he says, Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Moses had told them to stand still and that God would just do this. No, they were going to have to take a step of faith. They were going to have to move forward towards the Red Sea and in verse 16, it says, But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it, that the children of Israel may go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now, if you'll remember what I just was saying, that in Exodus chapter 4, verse 20, after this encounter at the burning bush, it says, Moses took his wife and his children and the rod of God. It was God's rod, and this rod is what He used to perform all of those plagues to do these things. But in this instance, God told him, you're going to win, but he started crying out to God to do something. And God basically said, Moses, you've got my rod. Take that rod and use it. In other words, I gave you authority. That is not your rod. It's my rod. You have my authority. You use it. You make this happen. He told him what to do, and he had given him the power and the authority. And I tell you, this is, this is something that some people have trouble with. They either get into this place to where, oh God, I can do nothing, you do it, and I'm just dependent upon you. And that's good as far as it goes, but then God will give you power and authority, and you need to get to where you stand and use it. And these look like opposites. Well, so am I supposed to take my authority? Am I supposed to command this to go? Or am I supposed to just sit here and wait on the Lord? Well, it's not either or. It's both. You wait on the Lord. You are trusting God. You don't have any trust in yourself. But at the same time, you take the authority and the power that He's given you and you exercise it. It says in James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The word resist means to actively fight against. And I find so many Christians that are praying and they're crying out to the Lord, Oh God, heal me. He told you to resist the devil and he'll flee from you. It says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, it was a command to his disciples, You go heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils, freely you've received, freely give. He didn't tell you to pray and ask God to heal the sick. He told you to heal the sick. Most people think, I can't heal the sick. I don't have any power. You don't have any power in yourself, but you've got the rod of God. If you have laid your life down, God has now given you His power and authority, and He told you to heal the sick. It's obvious that it's not your power. It's God's power, but it's in you, and you have to take your authority, and you have to command it. I could give you hundreds, maybe thousands of examples of this working in my life. You know, this property that we got in Woodland Park that we call the Sanctuary, we bought that property in September of 2009, and we spent two years trying to... I won't go through all the details, but we had to have this housing association that was adjacent to ours give us permission for the water rights on that land. And um, anyway, it's a long story. 
And the person who headed up that association said he didn't want us in there for two years. They fought us. And they had in their charter that anybody who challenged these things had to pay for the uh, lawyers. And so we paid for three different sets of lawyers to go through this thing. Every one of them ruled in our favor. They would just go get another one. They were delaying it. It had gone on for two years. It was costing me money. It was uh, a frustration. And anyway, I drove by that place every day on my way into this office right here. I had to pass our place that we bought up in Woodland Park, Colorado. And I had been patient and I'd just been waiting on the Lord and saying, I don't care what they say. I know it's going to work out. And I was trusting in the Lord. But one day as I was driving by, it just rose up on the inside of me. And I said, I'm tired of this. And I said, this isn't God. This is unreasonable. They are purposely just trying to delay us, hoping that we'll give up. And I got mad, not at the people, but at the devil. And I went to rebuking the devil. I commanded the devil to get out of the way. And I commanded any person that Satan was using to hinder this thing to get out of the way. And I said, you are going to be removed one way or the other. And I spoke and got mad and I rebuked this thing. Did you know that week we got the approval? And I mean, it had been dragging on for two years and it looked like it was going to drag on for another two years. But when I took my authority and commanded this, boom, like that, the things that we had been believing for came to pass. And basically, that's what the Lord is telling Moses. Moses knew what God wanted him to do and he had spoken out that it was going to happen. But then he must have been laying on his face crying out. And God said, why are you crying out to me? Most people would think, why are we crying out to you? Look at the Egyptians coming. They could kill us all. Oh, God, we're in a desperate situation. But the Lord is saying, it's not my turn. I gave you power and authority. Moses, you take my rod. You take the rod of God. You hold it out over the Red Sea, and you command the people to move forward. Boy, this is powerful. You know, God spoke this. TO ME. IT'S, AGAIN, A LONG STORY, BUT RIGHT AFTER JAMIE AND I GOT MARRIED, IT WAS MY OWN FAULT. IT WAS MY OWN STUPIDITY. I AM NOT BLAMING GOD FOR THIS, BUT WE WERE IN A FINANCIAL BIND, AND WE WERE GOING TO BE EVICTED FROM OUR APARTMENT THE VERY NEXT MORNING. THEY HAD GIVEN US AN EVICTION NOTICE. WE WENT TO A SERVICE THAT NIGHT. I WENT UP AND PRAYED WITH A MAN. JACK TAYLOR WAS THE ONE WHO WAS MINISTERING. AND, UH, HE HAD PREACHED ON THIS EXACT THING ABOUT THE ROD OF GOD AND HOW YOU HAVE TO TAKE THAT AUTHORITY AND YOU HAVE TO USE THE POWER THAT GOD HAS GIVEN YOU. THERE'S A TIME TO PRAY, BUT THEN THERE'S A TIME FOR YOU TO ACT IN FAITH ON WHAT GOD HAS TOLD YOU TO DO. AND HE PREACHED THIS MESSAGE AND and JAMIE AND I JUST WENT UP AND GOT AN AGREEMENT AND WE PRAYED AND SAID, IN THE NAME OF JESUS, WE COMMAND OUR FINANCES TO PAY THIS RENT TO COME IN. SO WE AGREED WITH THIS MAN AND WE WENT HOME. AND ANYWAY, IT'S A LONG STORY, BUT AT 3.30 THAT MORNING, MY BROTHER-IN-LAW KNOCKED ON THE DOOR. AND I MEAN, IT WAS 3.30 IN THE MORNING, AND HE HAD TO DRIVE. I DON'T REMEMBER HOW LONG IT WAS, BUT IT WAS 100 MILES OR SOMETHING LIKE THAT. AND HE HAD TO DRIVE 100 MILES. MY BROTHER-IN-LAW, HE LOVED ME, BUT HE ALSO THOUGHT I WAS STUPID BECAUSE I WOULDN'T WORK, AND I WAS JUST GOING FULL-TIME IN THE MINISTRY, AND I WASN'T WORKING. AND HE, he WAS RIGHT THAT I SHOULD HAVE BEEN WORKING. I was. WRONG IN THE WAY I WAS DOING THINGS, BUT I WAS CALLED INTO THE MINISTRY AND I WAS JUST MAKING MISTAKES. ANYWAY, HE HAD TOLD ME MANY TIMES, YOU'RE GOING TO STARVE. IT'S NOT GOING TO WORK. AND and SO ANYWAY, HE CAME AND KNOCKED ON MY DOOR AT 3.30 IN THE MORNING, AND HE JUST WALKED IN AND WE SAT AND TALKED FOR A WHILE. NOW, FINALLY, I SAID, LEON, WHAT ARE YOU DOING HERE? I SAID, IT'S 3.30 IN THE MORNING. AND HE WAS VERY CRITICAL OF ME. HE WAS NOT A SPIRITUAL GUY AS SUCH. HE he KNEW THE LORD, BUT HE WAS... uh, YOU WOULDN'T HAVE SAID HE WAS SPIRITUAL, LIKE HE HEARD FROM THE LORD AND GOD SPOKE TO HIM OFTEN. THAT WAS JUST NOT MY BROTHER-IN-LAW. AND WHEN I SAID, WHAT ARE YOU DOING HERE? HE SAID, DON'T ASK ME ANY QUESTIONS. DON'T ASK ME TO EXPLAIN THIS. I DON'T UNDERSTAND IT, BUT IF I HAVE EVER HEARD GOD IN MY LIFE, I HEARD GOD TELL ME TO COME HERE AND GIVE YOU THIS MONEY. AND I NEEDED $160. THAT it WOULD ALLOW US TO PAY OUR RENT AND GIVE $20 OFF OF IT. AND HE SAYS, GOD TOLD ME TO GIVE THIS TO YOU. AND HE GAVE ME A CHECK FOR $160. I FOUND OUT LATER HE WAS GOING TO uh, EAST TEXAS um, 
university. I'm not sure the exact name of it, but it was in Commerce, Texas. He was living on very small income and trying to get his doctorate degree. And that $160 was every penny that he had. He had at that time, I think, three daughters and um, they were very young and it was everything he had. And he emptied his bank account and gave it to me because God got him in the middle of the night and told him to bring me $160. That was a bigger miracle than if God would have turned a chair into money. When Jamie and I got home from that meeting, we just agreed with that preacher, but then we also laid hands on a chair and said, God, we are taking our authority, and if you have to turn this chair into money, we are commanding our money to be here by this time in the morning. And God used my brother-in-law, and it was a greater miracle to have God use him than it was to turn that chair into money. I mean, it was a miracle. And you know how it happened? Because we quit asking and we just took our authority and used what we had. You know, if you've listened to the whole teaching that I've given this week, this, it looks like a contradiction because I started out the week talking about it's not enough to know God's will. You also got to come to the end of yourself. You've got to reach to where, oh God, I can do nothing. And you've got to wait on God and let God do it instead of you trying to accomplish God's will. And some people focus on that. And here I am now talking about how we've got the power and the authority of the Lord and you have to take authority. You have to quit crying out to God and you've got to take authority and command the power of God to flow. Some people see those as opposites, but they aren't. They're complementary. It's like if you were going to walk across, you know, an expanse of space, you would have to anchor a, a rope or a line on one end and then pull it and have tension on it in the opposite direction to make something strong enough to make you have a tight rope so that you could walk across it. Every truth of God in the Bible is like that. You have to have one truth over here and then an apparent opposite truth over here that balances it. For instance, you're justified by faith without works. Romans chapter 3, that's a truth. But then James chapter 2 says faith without works is dead. Some people see those as opposites. They actually complement each other. And only when you get them in the proper uh, tension, you get them in the proper balance between each other, will you experience the full power. You've got to come to the end of yourself and realize that in yourself you're nothing. Throw yourself down before God. Follow His instructions even if it means that you're going to die, just like when Moses picked up that serpent by the tail. But then when you do that, God will give it back to you. It'll look like your stick, your rod, your life. But the truth is God is now in control and that it will carry supernatural power. And you've got to get to where even though you can do nothing in yourself, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And that's what Moses learned. This is how to, you follow God's will. The following video is an excerpt from our latest construction update where Andrew shared about the amazing progress we've made on both our Phase 2 auditorium and future ministry headquarters. To see the full video, visit awmi.net slash construction update. This was carpeted. They've now taken all of this carpet out and they've started the terrazzo floor. All of the upstairs here is 80% complete. They've now put these lights in. Of course, they still have the plastic over it, but the ceiling, this is what they're, that's Rulon ceiling. It's actually an ash ceiling and it is just beautiful. And this is gonna be all throughout this concourse, upstairs and downstairs. Okay, so we're now downstairs and we're close to our main entrance. Over here behind us, it's all covered up right now. This will be the very last thing that they put in so that they can get large equipment in and out. But there will be four sets of double glass doors and then an airlock and then four sets of more glass doors. And all of this will be that Rulon ceiling. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful place. So I also want to take you over to our new headquarters building. They're now beginning to erect walls and you can kind of see how it's going to look. Okay, so we're now in our new headquarters building. We're down on the first floor, and now they've started putting up all of these studs. We're putting in offices around here. This right here will be our television studio. Thank you for being a part of this. And again, uh, we are in a push to get this finished by August. In order to do that, we need some extra support. I would appreciate it if you'd help us. And again, thanks to all of you who've given. I know some of you have given over and above what you would have given, but you just are in agreement with what we're doing. You want to see people's lives change. So thank you for being a part of it. Thank you, partners, for making Andrew's vision a reality. To see the full video, visit awmi.net slash construction update today. 
Discover how to live out and accomplish God's will for your life when you get Andrew's teaching titled, How to Find, Follow, and Fulfill God's Will. It's available in a book in English or Spanish for a gift of any amount. This series is also available as three individual teachings, how to find God's will, how to follow God's will, and how to fulfill God's will. They're each available in a CD or DVD album recorded live at a Gospel Truth seminar, or they're each available as individual companion study guides. Each of these resources is available for a gift of any amount. I'd like to encourage you to get this product that I have on how to find, follow, and fulfill God's will. This book is actually a combination of three separate teachings. I've got a teaching, five parts on how to find God's will, five parts on how to follow God's will, five parts on how to fulfill God's will, and all three of these are combined into this one book. So we have the teaching on either CD or DVD. We've got the book. I've also got a book in Spanish, and then we have three study guides that will go through each one of these parts. And a bonus offer is our Destiny Stories DVD about people who have found God's will and are living it out in their life. It will be a blessing to you. You can get all three of these products in the God's Will package. This package includes the book, all three study guides, and your choice of either all three CD albums or all three DVD albums. Order the God's Will package today, and you'll also receive the most recent Destiny Stories DVD, Destiny Stories Volume 2. This entire package has a catalog value of $195, but you can get it today for just $135. Today's audio teaching is titled, The Rod of God. It's available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this CD free of charge. This is the last day we'll be offering this teaching, so be sure to respond today. You can order resources or become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download many free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. If you enjoyed today's program, you can watch this entire series and over 17 years of Andrew's TV and radio broadcasts free for you to download and share with others by going to awmi.net. awmi.net is where to find encouragement when you're discouraged. awmi.net is where to find biblical truth when you need strength. You can always count on awmi.net for sharing God's unconditional love and grace.